Hi, welcome to Troubadour's videos. Today we're going to take a close look at EVGA's new P67 for the Win Edition motherboard. And here it is, the long awaited for EVGA P67 for the Win motherboard. Now this motherboard does come bristling with features including USB 3.0 on the board itself as well as SATA 3 6 gigabit speeds. The board is obviously based upon P67 Express chipset and is designed for Intel socket 1155 CPUs. So what CPU would I use on this board? I'd probably go for Intel's Core i5 2500 or 2500K CPU or the Core i7 2600 or 2600K CPU. Now this board also comes bristling with enthusiast features including SLI, 3-way SLI and even 3-way SLI plus physics. And what it doesn't show here is this board is also AMD compatible, so you can run some crazy Crossfire X configurations on this board. So let's get the P67 following motherboard out of the box, check out the board itself and the accessories and see exactly what this board is all about. Okay, the main box itself has two accessory compartments, so let's check out what accessories come with a P67 for the wind board. Okay, we have an input output fan, this looks to be about a 25mm fan. We also have an input output shield, it appears that the fan sits on the top of the shield here to assist in heat evacuation from the case. Not quite sure exactly how much heat a 25mm fan will evacuate, but I'm sure it helps. We also have a USB 2.0 and FireWire expansion port for the back of your PC case. We also have a USB 3.0 expansion port for the back of your case and a onboard USB 3.0 connector. And in the last package we have two SATA 3 gig data cables as well as a SATA Molex to SATA power connector. Let's check out the second accessory compartment. We have a 3-way SLI bridge, a 3-way SLI extension bridge, a regular SLI bridge, and what appears to be some sleeved Molex the SATA power connectors and some SATA 6 gig data cables. And lastly, you will also receive your EVGA installation guide, driver CD and DVD with utilities, and the P67 visual quick installation guide. So let's check out the motherboard itself. And here it is. First look of EVJ's P67 for the wind motherboard. So let's get this board out of the wrapper and check out this motherboard as well as some of the features on this board. And here it is. Now this motherboard is an EATX or extended ATX form factor. One thing you immediately notice with this board is all the PCIe expansion slots. For some reason EVJ went with a totally passive cooling solution for this board, uh, probably to keep the audio or the acoustic level down from all the cooling fans on the board itself. But be mindful, if you're going to buy this motherboard you will need a PC case with good airflow to cool these heat sinks. Now if you're going to water cool, you don't get off so easily. You will still need a case with good airflow to cool the surrounding components unless of course you're going to totally water cool this motherboard. So let's have a closer look at this board as well as some of the functionality that comes on EVJ's P67 for the wind board. 
If you're only using one graphics card in slot 2, which is an X8X16 slot, a speed of X16 can be fully utilized on this board. However, if you wish to use two or more graphics cards, this will adjust the PCI speed to X8 across all X8X16 slots. To provide added power and stability across all PCI lanes or slots, EVJ have added a 4-pin Molex power connector. This is especially useful if you're going to be using SLI, 3-way SLI or some absolutely bonkers Raven Man 3-way SLI and physics combinations on this board. The input-output panel at the rear of the board contains the following connections. CMOS reset button, two USB 2.0 ports and Firewire port, two more USB 2.0 ports and two eSATA ports, two LAN ports, two USB 2.0 ports, two USB 3.0 ports, and audio input-output ports. Connections on the bottom of the motherboard include your EVJ control panel accessory connection, on-off reset power and hard disk drive LED connections, onboard USB 3.0 header, fan header, onboard USB 2.0 and firewire headers, another system fan header, CMOS reset button, power on off and reset buttons, a three position BIOS switch which allows you to select up to three different BIOSes. Now this is a great option if you want to maintain overclock settings, keep special profiles safe or test new BIOSes for stability or simply recover from a bad BIOS flash. And finally, the motherboard speaker. On the front edge of the board, you will notice the 24-pin ATX power connector has been turned 90 degrees for a neater look and better cable management. This motherboard also has PCIe slot enabled disabled jumpers which conveniently assist you in troubleshooting a problem graphics card without the need for a system teardown. This is indeed a very useful function if all your graphics cards are water-cooled and allows you the troubleshooting insight without the need to drain and tear down your cooling loop. Next we have two SATA 3 6 gigabit ports and four SATA 2 3 gigabit ports. The P67 for the win motherboard has four 240 pin slots for DDR3 memory modules with a total capacity of 16 gigabyte. Supported memory modules can be utilized in single channel or dual channel configurations and each slot supports memory capacities of 1, 2 or 4 GB with a rated speed of 2133 plus MHz. The CPU socket contains 300% more gold content than spec motherboards. The added gold content to the CPU pins provides lower inductance and superior power delivery. To provide as much stable power as possible to the CPU, the P67 for the win board features two 8-pin ATX 12V power connections. Connection 1 is to be used for gamers, mild overclockers and those who use Farmville. However, extreme enthusiasts and overclockers and those only to be named as Bonkers Raven Mad can utilize the second 8-pin connection to unleash up to 600 watts of light dimming circuit glowing energy for a wicked extreme overclock. As an added feature, this board also has a compact flash port. This can utilize compact flash cards for additional data storage or scratch drives. And if you currently own an LGA775 board and dread upgrading due to the amount you've already invested in CPU cooling solutions, EVJ have made the upgrade process far less painful. The P67 for the win motherboard is compatible with CPU socket 1155, 1156 and also socket 775 cooling solutions. The mounting holes for the LGA775 cooler mounts are slightly offset by a few degrees to avoid interference with the LGA1155 mounting holes. This slight rotation shouldn't affect CPU cooler performance but may create some physical fitment and clearance issues with some types or designs of CPU coolers. So let's have a closer look at EVJ's P67 for the win motherboard and some of its other specs and features.
Overall, EVJ's P67 for the win motherboard is feature packed, caters for the gamer, benchmarker or enthusiast and has the ability to be sustainable and utilize existing LGA775 cooler options if you skip the X58 platform and want to upgrade to the latest technology. The bonus data and scratch drive option is a plus and triple BIOS switch can be your saviour if your BIOS flash goes wrong. Now, the only question I have for EVJ is when can we test the Z68 classified motherboard? Thanks again for watching Troubadour's videos. I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube or even swing by our forums at www.troubadourforums.com where only the true enthusiasts hang out.